News at 6 with your award-winning news team, Lynn Brooks, Philip Coleman, Weather with Richard Scott, and Sports with Gary Harris. We're glad you're with us tonight. I'm Lynn Brooks. And I'm Jenny Wallace. And tonight for Philip Coleman. Well, we start off tonight with the number one ranked Crimson Tide. Bama, of course, coming off a bye week, getting ready to face off against a newcomer to the SEC. That's right, Lynn. Details in tonight's top story. Bama heads to Columbia, Missouri to take on the University of Missouri's Mizzou Tigers this Saturday. Now, this is the first year Mizzou has played in the SEC. Now, the Tide rolls into this game undefeated and ranked number one in the nation. Now, Mizzou's record stands at three and three. But Alabama head coach Nick Saban says don't sleep on the Tigers because this will be unfamiliar territory for the Crimson Tide. You know, this is an important game to us. Uh, it's a SEC game, and you know, we're playing in a place where nobody in our team meeting today has ever been before, including me. So, you know, we're playing a new opponent uh, that, in my mind, uh, is a very challenging opponent for a lot of reasons. Kickoff is set for 2.30, and the game will be carried on CBS. WVA Sports Director Gary Harris will have much more coming up in your home team sports. The Iron Bowl is still weeks away, but Bama and Auburn are already in a big battle to beat hunger. The University of Alabama's Community Service Center kicked off the 19th annual Beat Auburn, Beat Hunger food drive today. That drive started back in 1994 and has since helped collect nearly 3 million pounds of food. During the weeks leading up to the Iron Bowl, students, faculty, staff, alums, and residents in both Tuscaloosa and Auburn fight hunger and poverty in West Alabama. Last year, Alabama collected more than 237,000 pounds of food, beating Auburn, which collected more than 134,000 pounds. Organizers say they need the community's help. Oh, we need everybody. Absolutely. Any, anybody in Tuscaloosa that can help out, anybody related, anybody who loves the Crimson Tide, anybody willing to help out and combat hunger in West Alabama, we need. The food bank is accepting all non-perishable food items. You can find collection barrels all around the UA campus and all across Tuscaloosa. Today kicks off National Fire Prevention Week, and with the cooler temperatures, you may be turning up the heat to get warm. But firefighters in Tuscaloosa County are reminding everyone to take caution when using heating appliances for the first time. WVA's Jennifer Edwards has more. Duncanville volunteer firefighter Thomas Simmons says he remembers February 23rd, 2010 like it was yesterday. It's still very touched with us. It was the day his daughter, 46-year-old Marsha Beard, was killed in a house fire. Simmons says there were many things that contributed to her death, but an electrical heater is being blamed for the fire. The best that they could tell, it was possibly from an electric heater, a faulty electric heater or electrical problem. And uh, so due to the contents of it, that it was uh, totally burned, it was pretty hard to find, but that was basically what had, did cause the fire. And her being deaf and not feeling well that day, that contributed to her not getting out as well. This is why Simmons says when the cold weather arrives, make sure to use proper heating procedures. Before you turn your heat on this time of year, is to have it uh, checked out, clean your uh, uh, chimneys, especially your heating units, uh, filters, and so forth like that. And you can never be 100% uh, safe, but at least you can try. Tuscaloosa Fire Chief Alan Martin agrees. Tuscaloosa Fire and Rescue is being recognized for their efforts in reducing lives lost to house fires. Part of their Life Safety Achievement Award is fire prevention, especially during the cold months. You have a heating appliance, especially an electrical appliance, uh, that you don't use extension cords for those, or if you have to use an extension cord, make sure it's UL approved. Chief Martin says always make sure the heater is unplugged when it's not in use, and make sure to have a smoke alarm on every floor in your home and check the batteries often. Reporting in Tuscaloosa County, Jennifer Edwards, WVUA News. Chief Martin also recommends only plugging one appliance into a circuit at a time. 
Another big story we're following for you is the weather. It's beautiful out there right now, but it started out a little dreary and on the chilly side this morning. I actually had to turn a little heat on this I did morning. Too. <laughs> yeah. What can we expect tonight? How's that thermostat going to look for us? Chief Meteorologist Richard Scott has a first look at our forecast. Hi, Richard. Hey, Lynn and Janie. Good Monday evening to you. Getting cool in a hurry after we kind of warmed up a little bit this afternoon. Temperatures about to take a nosedive out there this evening. 60 Tuscaloosa, 56 Haleyville, the cold spot. Coleman, Gadsden at 55 down the south. A little warmer towards Rockford and Clanton. We've got those mid to upper 60s down towards Linden, York. Lower 60s about to drop back at the 50s down south. But the satellite radar, we're dealing with a little bit of cloud cover starting to break up slowly but surely. As that happens tonight, we'll go clear and temperatures really take a tumble pretty quick. We're talking 48 at 10, 44 at midnight. Now, how cold is it going to get tonight? And how about your weekend forecast? Weather straight ahead. Stick around. Habitat for Humanity Tuscaloosa and Lowe's are teaming up to build five homes in areas struck by the April 2011 tornado. That's right. Today the walls were raised on three of those five homes. A number of groups are helping out, including the University of Alabama students, churches, schools, and also businesses from all across the state. Lowe's has been a national partner with Habitat for Humanity since back in 2004 and is donating $400,000 to help build the five homes. Homeowner Jesse Hill says it's a great feeling to have a new place to call home. I just tell you, it's a good, good feeling. I can't explain it. <laughs> I need to be at home. <laughs> it's a good feeling. Good for her. And that group's goal is to build attractive, affordable, sustainable new homes for families. And it looks like it all worked out. It it's does. all working out very nicely. <laughs> it is. Another topic now, parking in Tuscaloosa now going green. That's right. A new green lot is under construction at Canterbury Chapel. The spaces will be made, uh, made of drivable grass-filled porous tiles. Officials say this new lot will create less storm water runoff and will have small gravel to enhance water absorption. Church leaders say the new lot will prevent grass and endangered trees from being damaged when people park in the area on game days. We are the custodians of the, the planet, and uh, the more cement we put down and the more we destroy the planet, the, 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 we're not protecting the environment that we've been given by God. Uh, we, we think we can serve God best by looking after his planet and going as green as possible to preserve it. Construction is expected to be complete in about two weeks. Well, still to come for you here on WVA News at 6, you'll meet a West Alabama family opening their home and their hearts to foster to a foster child and how you can learn more about becoming a foster parent. And coming up, home team weather getting cold in a hurry tonight. 60 degrees now, tough schools, upper 50s just to the north of town. How cold it's going to get tonight? How about your weekend forecast? Weather straight ahead. Stay with us. And the Crimson Tide kicks off preparations for the Missouri game. Today, Gary Harris will have the latest in your home team sports.